Welcome back. Here is chapter 27, Hidden Virtues. Denny! At first, Marvin was overcome with relief. Denny was here. Now everything would be all right. Surely he would recognise the drawing as Jordan's original. He and Christina must have discovered their mistake. The ruse was over. Fortitude would be back on its way to the Met in no time. We won't be needing this anymore, will we? Denny said. Marvin inched out from under the satchel just in time to see Denny remove Fortitude from its matting. They were in what appeared to be the empty lobby of a small building, with glass exit doors on either end and benches pressed against the walls. The cab is waiting for you, Denny asked the dark-haired man who was hunched over the satchel. See, si, ignore. Go quickly and leave this on the floor of the cab. That will keep them busy for a while. Denny handed him the piece of matting. And this is for you. He held out a fat white envelope. Marvin had no time to puzzle over this exchange because he knew he had only a few seconds to escape. He crawled out from under the satchel and scuttled across the bench to where Denny was sitting. He climbed onto Denny's corduroy trousers and gripped a belt loop with all six legs. The other man stuffed the bulging envelope into his jacket. Grazie, signor. Briskly, he shoved the matting back into the satchel, zipped it shut and hurried through the glass door onto the street. Denny mumbled to the drawing. All right, my darling, I have some new packaging for you and we'll be on our way. He set Fortitude gently in a heavy folder, then inside a briefcase. Marvin shivered, still trying to make sense of what was happening. He felt a twinge of uncertainty. When would they return to the museum? Denny stood and his coat flapped over Marvin, obscuring his view. He must have walked out onto the street because it was cold again and they were engulfed in the noise of the city. This time the motion didn't last long and it was all walking. Marvin could tell. Eventually, he heard the soft sucking sound of elevator doors and the ding of a button being pressed. A few minutes later, the elevator doors opened and keys jangled. There was a faint rustling in the sound of Denny humming. Marvin heard him set the briefcase down and unlock it. He must be removing the drawing now. There you are, my beauty, Denny said softly. He tossed off his coat and finally Marvin could see. They were in a small, dark room, lit only by a lamp in one corner. It was some kind of study, Marvin decided, panelled in rich reddish-brown wood with shelves of books lining the walls. Denny had placed the drawing on a large, polished table, and when Marvin looked on either side of it, he gasped. There were three other drawings on the table. Prudence, temperance, justice. Time to join your sisters, Denny said. How long we've waited for you. Chapter 28, Among Thieves. Marvin's head was spinning. What did Denny mean? Here they were, Jorah's four virtues. As confused and scared as he was, he was overcome by a yearning to look at them. It took every ounce of his self-control to stay hidden under the belt loop, silent and still. All the long-lost stolen drawings, here with Denny. The microchip was gone. There was no way for the FBI, FBI to find them. Marvin couldn't make sense of it. Had Christina planned the whole theft? Had she switched the two drawings herself? He trembled with horror. There could be only one explanation. Denny and Christina had stolen the drawings. All of them. As shocking as it seemed, they must have been working together from the beginning. And this was their goal, to steal the final virtue. But why? Denny leaned over the table and Marvin edged out from under the belt loop to stare at the four drawings. His heart leapt in recognition. The fine, steady pen strokes were like a greeting from an old friend. The women in the other drawings were immediately recognisable as Jordas. Tiny as the images were, the figures were solid and substantial, anchored to the paper. Their expressions had the same pensiveness that fortitudes had, a kind of willed loneliness. In prudence, a maiden shunned the winged Cupid who offered her a laurel wreath. In temperance, she poured some kind of liquid from a small jug into a cup. The lines were as delicate and miraculous as the pattern on a butterfly's wing. 
Finally, Marvin turned to Justice. The drawing had a dense, breathing presence, not at all like the flat image in the book Christina had shown them. The girl gazed sadly into the distance, her sword resting at her side, as if she were already resigned to the unfairness of the world. She raised her scales like a lantern. Marvin heard a long sigh. He realised with a start that he and Denny were caught in the same reverie, transfixed by the drawings. Denny straightened and took out his cell phone. Marvin quickly dropped from his belt loop to the table, hiding in the grooved wood at its edge. Liesel? It's Denny. How are you, my dear? Yes, still as planned. Into Frankfurt. I've purchased an open ticket because I'm not certain what day I'll be travelling. You'll arrange my transportation from the airport. Denny paused, listening. Good. Yes, that's right. I'll be in touch. See you soon. So that was it, Marvin thought. Denny and Christina must be planning to take the drawings out of the country. Liesel had a foreign sound to it. Marvin watched Denny decant a bottle on the desk and pour an amber liquid into a squat crystal glass. He turned to the drawings. To virtue, he whispered huskily, raising the tumbler, and Marvin thought Denny sounded as if he was about to cry. And to virtue's master, the astounding Albrecht Drawer. He drained the glass and set it on the desk. As Marvin watched, he gently concealed the drawings under several sheets of protective paper, then left the room. Marvin crawled across the table to where the drawings lay. As he crouched there, wondrously close to them, he was filled with confusion. It was impossible to think of Denny and Christina as thieves. They were devoted to Jura's art. Marvin pictured the two of them in Christina's office, interrupting each other with their passion for the drawings. Was it all an act? None of this made sense. Then he remembered something Denny had said about two about people who stole works of art, that sometimes they did it for love. See you next time.